The universe is a pretty big place. If you were to take a minute to think about the size of the Earth and how many seconds there are in an hour, then it would take you more than four years to count all of those seconds. And that's just on one planet. If you were to multiply that by the number of planets in our own solar system, you'd have more than a billion seconds, and then take that number and multiply it by the number of stars in the Milky Way, you'd have nearly a septillion seconds. So these are just some of the numbers to try and help us begin to understand how big the universe is. It seems like the universe goes on forever, but it actually doesn't. It's simply too vast to be seen all at once by any one person, even if they were looking through all of the best telescopes. The Earth, our solar system and even our galaxy are all tiny fractions of an area called space. Space can actually be described as a big void where nothing can be seen, even though we believe it's not completely empty. If you were to scale the entire universe up, you would find that the Earth and all of our solar system are actually 0.01% of the entire universe. In other words, if you could take all the stars and planets in the sky and squeeze them together into a ball, it would still only be one millionth of 1% of the size of our galaxy. The universe is constantly expanding, so it's possible that there is life out there that we haven't discovered yet. Scientists estimate that there are between 200 and 400 billion galaxies in the observable universe, and each one can have up to 100 billion stars. The closest galaxy to our own is the Andromeda Galaxy, which is 2.5 million light years away. Even if there was life on one of those planets, traveling at that speed would take thousands of years. So even if aliens did exist somewhere in our galaxy, it's possible that we would never be able to see what they look like or meet them anyway. People have tried to find signs of life throughout the universe for hundreds of years. There have even been television programs about it. Back in 2004, a show called Finding Life was broadcast on the National Geographic Channel. It focused mainly on trying to detect biological and chemical signatures in space. The crews placed a massive array of sensitive detectors around the world and they were able to pick up an astonishingly high number of cosmic rays. This is just one example of how powerful our instruments are, now that would have been impossible not too many decades ago. In October 2005, a NASA spacecraft called Dawn was launched to the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It spent five years traveling through an area of space where the sun shines so bright it would be like staring into a light bulb. To protect itself, it has to travel behind the giant planet Jupiter when the solar wind is at its strongest. Eventually, Dawn reached its destination and began studying two large asteroids, Vesta and Ceres. These are called protoplanets because they formed early in the history of our solar system but never achieved full planet status. Dawn took pictures of the two asteroids and found that they had ice in their composition. These are important findings because they seem to confirm that protoplanets, like our own solar system, could have harbored water and perhaps even life in the past. Since then more missions to the outer planets have been proposed by NASA and other space agencies, but it's going to take a lot more than a television program or five years for us to find extraterrestrial life. The search has taken on a whole new level of urgency thanks to some very exciting new discoveries from our planet. We've learned a lot about how living organisms work and what they need in order to survive. Some of the oldest life forms on Earth are microscopic organisms called microbes. These tiny creatures can survive on very little food and water, so if there is any water available at all, it's possible that there might be life in those places. Humans actually depend on microbes to provide them with oxygen through a process called photosynthesis. There are many scientists who believe Mars is the most likely place where we will find other living organisms because it is much like Earth in many ways. It has seasons, polar ice caps, volcanoes and dry riverbeds. A few years ago NASA sent a rover named Curiosity to explore the surface of Mars and look for signs of water or any traces of life. The rover landed Mars August 5, 2012 and just within 51 days Curiosity rover found direct evidence for an ancient streambed and gale crater, suggesting an ancient vigorous flow of water on Mars. While there is still no conclusive proof of life on Mars, it's not too early to be looking for the possibility. Some scientists are working on ways to try and detect life forms through their radio signals. Since our planet traverses a huge area as it orbits the Sun, we may catch a signal from some faraway galaxy that could be coming from another intelligent being. While the possibility of finding another intelligent life form is slim, it's certainly possible. The existence of a vast universe inhabited by millions, if not billions, of galaxies means that we are likely to be just one among many intelligent species that live out there. And although it would be exciting to meet an alien species, I don't think it should hold us back from progressing as a civilization. Science and technology are making our planet a safer place to live. We understand so much more about how our bodies work, we're finding new cures for illnesses, and now we can use our technology to travel through space. I believe that if we find life in the universe, we will not just think oh look what those aliens have done. Instead, it will inspire us to get out there and start exploring. If you're watching this today from your mother's basements or a library or if you have access to the internet, that's because of what we've learned over the last 3,000 years. Imagine how our species will progress in another 50 years. So whether we find life out there or not, that shouldn't hold us back from getting creative and being curious. As Albert Einstein once said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. 
it's time to evolve. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to Detori for more exciting videos like this.